What's up, viewers, subscribers, and agents alike? It's your boy, Light Lucifer Fan Prince, coming at y'all once again. If you're watching this video around children, please remove them from your immediate vicinity until they're old enough to hear the contents of this video. Because I am about to go off. Okay, people. Now that we got that out the way, I think I need to bring something to the community's attention. Something that has been vaguely um, publicized by media. And it's another one of those things that basically should let you know that history does not, quote unquote, repeat itself. It just continues. Now, here we go again with another one of these nefarious plots to otherwise thwart the economic growth and stability of the melanated community. Now, some people may know about this. Some people may not. This is more directed to those who don't know as opposed to those who do. But in 2022, history just keeps continuing itself. The Black Wall Street Chamber, President Sherry Yvonne Smith, was found dead outside of Tulsa. Now, everyone that knows about Tulsa knows particularly that from May 30th, 1921 to June 1st, 1921. There were countless businesses of melanated people destroyed, burned. There were murders. Just totally ravaged the town of the affluence of people of color, of the indigenous people, I should say. I really don't like using the word black because it's really a misnomer in certain instances. But totally destroyed the town. Now, rumors are spread because they would try to explain it off as white woman saying somebody raped her, yada, yada, yada. No, it's bigger than that. See, when you had to realize that this was a time when the prosperity of the melanated people, indigenous people, copper colored people were actually thriving and actually building the blocks of generational wealth for their families. There comes a little bit of jealousy and anger in any instance where it comes from the opposition who basically would like for you to think that if you're melanated, to think that financially, economically, and socially, that you have some sort of niche you're supposed to be placed inside of. But these people overcame insurmountable odds. And they, yes, they managed to have businesses, even thrive after the so-called Tulsa Massacre in 1921. They totally thrived still after. But the thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to in history is that when those businesses were destroyed because of this affluence, not because of anything negative or anything criminal, just because of being affluent, who moved in? The same people who started the shit. So in 2022, right? In 2022, you have to realize their descendants are still there. I don't know why people don't believe this shit. It's not so much of a belief factor. I don't even know why people don't acknowledge this. When they came in, they knew that these people had something. Here it is, though. In 2022, when these people still have something, here we go. Let's go into the story. Sherry Yvonne Smith's husband, Martin Everett Smith, later died as a result of injuries sustained in the incident. 
Now, it never says what the incident is. It never says in any news story what took place, how they passed, never says how they died, never says whether it was gunshot, never says what it, it never says any of that. It just says sustained in incident. It says in incident, which police describe Wednesday as appearing in quotation marks to be domestic in nature. Oklahoma authorities are investigating the deaths of a black Wall Street Chamber of Commerce president and her husband after they were called to the couple's home Wednesday morning. Wait a minute. Anyone with a gleaning into context clues will know exactly who the fuck called the police if he was injured critically and she was dead. They say the call came from inside the house from other news stories such as the New York Times, but it never says who. Didn't say husband called. This girl, she couldn't call, obviously, because she was gone. But Bixby police responded to a 911 call at a residence in the Tulsa suburb where they found Sherry Yvonne Smith dead and her husband, Martin Everett Smith, injured. It just says injured. doesn't say by what way. It just says injured. Martin was transported to a nearby hospital where he later passed away. How very so convenient. Police have not disclosed what type of injury the Smith suffered. Very odd, isn't it? But in the press release Wednesday night, said the incident appears to be domestic in nature, quotation marks included, but the investigation is still underway to determine the timeline and what led to this tragedy. Police are not looking for a suspect at this time. How clever. My heart is very heavy over the death of Sherry Gamble Smith, visionary leader of the Black Wall Street Chamber in Tulsa. Kevin Levitt, executive director of Tulsa's George Kaiser Family Foundation, who posted on Twitter, in tribute to Smith Wednesday, she was a warm and wonderful human being full of generosity and spirit and a conviction to do justice and an act with decency always. Things like this don't usually happen here. Bixby police added to Oklahoma City's KOCO ABC news station. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation is currently assisting with the investigation. As the president and CEO of Tulsa based Black Wall Street Chamber of Commerce, Smith led a nonprofit dedicated to promoting the sound economic well being of African American owned businesses, per her organization's website. The website serves as an advocate to unify, promote, and empower the African American community through entrepreneurship, programming, economic development, education, and training in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It added, the name of the organization derives from the former nickname of the Greenwood neighborhood, in which indeed was the center point or the center of the Tulsa massacre. Greenwood, which prospered in the early 20th century. Tragically, Black Wall Street came to an end with the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921, which saw the death of over hundreds of residents and destruction of over 1,200 homes and businesses, reported the New York Times. Now, these people, particularly, what's his name? Jesse Williams, great, 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 great grandson, quote unquote, of the elder, the eldest Williams. I don't know his particular first name, but if you do your research, you'll understand who his great greatest grandfather is. And you'll understand he kept the legacy going alive by starting the first United Bank. In Greenwood, right? So he kept the legacy going. First United Bank. Over 100,000 individuals signed and agreed to actually invest their monetary power into this particular structure of the First United Bank. First United Bank centrally control and own bank by nothing but melanated people and board of directors, right? With over $2.5 trillion in spending power. So now 
You're teaching people to rebuild Black Wall Street originally. Now, we're not talking about the one that's the offshoot in Georgia. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the original, the grassroots Black Wall Street that was destroyed. Now you're bringing back $2.5 trillion of financial literacy and entrepreneurship to a community that was diminished. And you mean to tell me that the children of these vigilante beasts aren't still th around? This is a historical move, people. This is not accidental. This was a setup. Those people were murdered just like they did in 1921. And you mean to tell me that one woman and her husband, who were the board of directors to the Chamber of Commerce in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the Greenwood District, you mean to tell me that all of a sudden this happens out the blue when you have the backing of hundreds of thousands of investors with $2.5 trillion net worth and spending power to rebuild the community? And this just happens overnight? It's not a coincidence. Riddle me that. Yes, people, this recently happened. And no, it's not going to gain mass media coverage. So they're keeping you in that United States of fear concept. Yes, they are. They are. You better wake the fuck up. And wake up quick. Because I don't give a fuck what no racist piece of trash, no bigot, no Trump supporter got shit to say. One thing we cannot deny is the fact that they never wanted us to have financial literacy, economic independency, and nonetheless, sovereignty in our own commercial right. Can't deny that. Historically, it's been proven. Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921 was the first actual military-assisted raid on airspace inside of the guarded airspace zone of what we call the United States Continental bombed, quote-unquote, its own indigenous people. This shouldn't come to you as a surprise, people. Shouldn't come to you as a surprise at all. Shouldn't. No suspects? Of course not. Why would you, why would you investigate yourself? in less than 15 minutes. First time viewing this channel, like and subscribe. Don't like what I have to say? Turn my video off. Simple as that. Peace, light, love. Stay tuned.